The film opens with a soccer game where we meet the film's young protagonist, Mark Evans. The young boy is enjoying the game, but his father, Jack, suddenly appears on the field. His father's face conveys sadness. The two of them rush to the hospital. Mark's mother is ill with cancer and has asked to see him one last time. Mark promises her that she'll not die and will do everything to keep her alive. Unfortunately, seconds later, his mother passes away and we attend her funeral. Mark's father has to fly to Tokyo for a fortnight on business. Wallace, Jack's brother, offers to host Mark temporarily. After this deal in Tokyo, Jack can stay with Mark for the entire time. Jack and Mark drive to snowy Maine, where the family that will take Mark in resides. A few hours later, they arrive in Maine and are warmly welcomed by Wallace and his daughter, Connie. Mark meets Wallace's wife, Susan, and their son, Henry. The boy has prepared a mask for Mark to play together. Apparently, he is a lovely boy and very friendly. During dinner, Henry starts kicking Mark, but it all seems like a childish joke. They quickly become buddies. Jack says goodbye to Mark before leaving for the trip and promises him that he will return for good. The next day, Mark sees Henry playing outside and immediately jumps out of bed. He finds no one upstairs and comes downstairs to eat breakfast. Later, he joins Henry and they start playing together. A little later, Henry shows Mark what every child probably dreams of, a tent in a tree. Henry climbs it, but Mark gets caught in a branch that breaks off. Henry manages to grab Mark's hand, and here's the scary part. Henry asks him if he can fly. In the end, Henry saves his new friend's life, but their fun doesn't end there. They continue running around and reach an abandoned warehouse. They start smashing the glass with stones, but soon the security guard arrives and they run away. They keep running. It's fascinating how much energy the children have. They reach a well and Henry lights a cigarette. Henry starts giving a psychopathic speech about Mark's mother. He asks if he had seen her when she died and what color her face was. Henry points out that he saw his brother when he died. The Evans family had a baby, only a few months old, who drowned in the bathtub. Henry began to describe his appearance after he died in a rather odd way, without expressing emotion. Mark tells him to stop talking about his mother and these horrible things, but Henry threatens to throw him in a well. Yet, a moment later, Henry apologizes as if nothing happened. Before going to sleep, Mark says today was a great day, and Henry promises him that tomorrow will be even better. The next day, the boys walk on a bridge, but suddenly, a dog starts chasing them. They reach the other side and trap the dog on the bridge. Later, the two reach a cliff. In the distance, they manage to see Henry's mother. Susan often goes to that cliff to think about the child who is no longer with them. Later, Henry takes Mark to the barn, promising to show him his invention. Henry spent three months building a crossbow. They decide to try it for the first time. They find a cat, but Mark says to hit the tree to scare the cat and not kill it. Henry shoots and hits the tree, after which he says he needs to improve the crossbow's sight. Subsequently, Mark goes to the psychologist to help him cope with the loss of his mother. Unlike every patient, the young boy doesn't talk much. He feels guilty about his mother's death. That night, Mark has a nightmare. He begins to think that his mother has been reincarnated as Susan. Meanwhile, Henry watches them with jealous eyes. The next day, Mark plays together with Connie. She is a sweet, innocent little girl. She would like to play together with Henry and Mark, but her brother won't let her. Henry and Mark start playing and running around. Henry decides to try the crossbow one more time. He aims at a dog passing on the bridge and hits it. Mark is startled and confused. Later, the two carry the dog in a sack and throw it into the well. For the rest of the day, Mark stops playing with Henry. He watches them uneasily on the sidelines. Henry enters the house and calls Mark into the barn to show him something. Henry shows Mark a mannequin he has built. Henry suggests that he do something with the dummy, but doesn't reveal what. The two take the mannequin to a highway bridge. Henry lays the dummy on the edge of the bridge and throws it into the middle of the road. This causes unavoidable accidents. Mark is terrified and asks Henry why he did this. On the other hand, Henry makes him feel guilty, saying he doesn't know how to have fun. That night, Mark hears on the news about today's accident on the highway. Mark tries to tell Henry's father the truth, but the little devil is a skilled manipulator. A little later, Connie comes into Henry's room to tell him they can go ice skating tomorrow. Henry gets angry because she enters his room without asking permission. 
On the other hand, Mark defends Connie in a fight between the two boys. Susan enters the room and Henry says in an angel's voice that they were just playing. The next day at the playground, Mark watches Connie, worried about what might happen to her. One day, Jack calls to hear from Mark, but Henry answers the phone. The boy says that Mark is not nearby, even though he's just a stone's throw away. That day while eating, Henry asks his parents if Mark can sleep in the room of Richard, the baby who passed away at a few months old. Actually, Mark doesn't want to sleep there, but Henry did it on purpose. Henry knows that his mother gets upset when they start talking about Richard. Susan goes to Richard's room and starts crying. Henry comes up to her and speaks sweet words like a true angel. That evening, Susan and Wallace go out to eat together. The children decide to play hide and seek. Mark is still worried that Henry might do something to Connie. In fact, he tells her that they need to go to bed and convinces her by saying that he will read her a fairy tale. After Connie falls asleep, Henry enters the room and looks at Connie as if he has something on his mind. Mark now knows the real Henry and decides to sleep on the floor to protect Connie. Mark wakes up alone in the morning and learns that Connie and Henry are ice skating. Mark sprints like a bullet towards the rink. He sees Henry and Connie skating together. At one point, Henry starts to speed up and pushes Connie into the dangerous part of the lake. Connie falls into the icy water and Henry goes to her and pretends to try to save her. He gives his hand but does not try to help her. Connie falls under the water and by now she will certainly die. But soon, two men arrive and break the ice. They rescue Connie and take her to the hospital. Mark realizes that it was not an accident at all. At the hospital, Susan runs worriedly and Wallace tells her that Connie survived but needs rest. Mark tries to talk to Susan and reveals to her that it was not an accident. But instead, Henry tried to kill her. Susan, shocked, impulsively slaps Mark. She says she loves Henry with all her heart and does not believe he is capable of something like that. One evening, Henry visits his sister in the hospital. Susan asks him again what happened at the skating rink and Henry tells him it was an accident. Henry has activated the angel mode again and his mother does not suspect anything. The next day, Mark calls his father and tells him the truth. Jack tells him to tell the psychologist as well, but when Mark tries to tell her the truth, Henry acts calm and makes Mark seem out of his mind. The psychologist falls into Henry's trap and the boy tells him a lot of lies about Mark. Later, they meet again and Henry tells him that no one will believe his story. Still, Mark is sure that sooner or later, the truth will come out. One night, Mark surprises Henry in the kitchen. Mark thinks he has poisoned the food. Mark tries to throw all the food out of the refrigerator and Henry calls his parents. Again, everyone thinks Mark has lost his mind and after putting him in Richard's room, they all go to sleep. The next day, Susan goes to the barn where Henry hides his tools and experiments. Susan finds Richard's rubber duck. The toy disappeared the day Richard died. Susan tries to find out why Henry hid it from her, even though she was looking for it. Henry claims that the toy is his, and after a fit of rage, snatches it from her hands, runs to the cemetery, and throws it into the well. Susan stands on the cliff, and in the process, Henry is at home revealing his plan to Mark. Henry plans to kill his mother, now considering her as Mark's mother. The latter threatens to kill him first and puts scissors to his throat. At that moment, Wallace enters the room and sees the scene. At this point, he grabs Mark and locks him in a room. In the meantime, Susan returns home and Henry asks her to take a walk together. Mark sees him through the window but cannot do anything. He's trapped in the house, so he breaks the window. But in that instant, he's caught by Wallace. Mark manages to escape from his hands and runs after Susan and Henry. Susan asks Henry if he killed Richard and the boy confesses. Susan tells him she will help him and asks him to trust her. But Henry does not trust her and runs from her to the cliff to pretend to jump. The young maniac is too cunning. He hides in the bushes, stands behind her and pushes his mother off the cliff. Fortunately, she grabs onto a ledge of the cliff and overhead, Henry holds onto a huge rock but just as he's about to throw it, Mark pounces on him in a fight to the death. A second later, the boys hang from the cliff's edge. Susan manages to regain her footing and grabs them both, but she has enough strength to pull only one of them out. Henry keeps saying he loves her while Mark is almost falling. Susan looks sorrowfully at Henry and drops him, saving only Mark. 
Now, it is all over, and we see Mark standing in front of the Arizona mountains. The boy ponders whether Susan would have made the same choice if she could go back in time. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.